I would love to uh, share just a bit, if you don't mind. Please do. All right, so this is Neil Oates. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Thanks to the Miami Association and for uh, YPN for allowing this to happen. Um, just talking about the idea of time management. Um, so this is one of the things that I've been a student for uh, for about the past 15 uh, to, to 16 years, especially in the real estate industry. Um, before we go anywhere, before you, because there's only so much we can cover in these sessions. Uh, what I'm going to ask you all to do, if you're really serious about making the most of your time, especially in this industry, whether it is professionally or personally, uh, and trying to get you know that, that myth that we hear called balance, uh, I'm just going to ask you all to become students outside of bar camp today uh, of a couple of people. One is going to be Brian Tracy, B-R-I-A-N. T-R-A-C-Y, Brian Tracy. He is what many of us consider to be the father of time management here in the United States. So I think Brian Tracy is going to be a fantastic um, person for us to study. The next one is going to be Darren Hardy, D-A-R-R-E-N-H-A-R-D-Y. Um, Darren Hardy. Maybe you've heard uh, of him um, with Success Magazine, The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster, or um, the compound effect book. Uh, and then his mentor, Brian, I'm sorry, Darren Hardy's mentor was Jim Rohn, J-I-M-R-O-H-N. Uh, and I think that just with those three individuals, if you go through, watch something on YouTube, listen to some of the podcasts they have, um, or any information you can get, especially their books, um, I, I think it would really help us uh, with what's important um, when it comes to time management and not to teach, but just to just give a couple of pointers and tips that I've learned uh, is that time management really is uh, a myth. There, there is no such thing as time management. And if you all are familiar with any of the three individuals I just mentioned, um, the, the saying is that we can't manage time. We can only manage ourselves or our emotions. Um, and, and I think that that realization uh, is something that is vital for us to succeed here in real estate. And it really goes back to what are our key functions? What are our dollar productive activities, DPAs or IPAs, our income producing activities? Um, I think for us, myself included, it's really easy for us to get distracted by the flashy and, and become busy and not become productive and, you know, we, we always hear about time blocking. Many of us may have uh, our planners out or we're using some type of calendar app on our phone uh, or computer. Uh, what I would ask us is, are we doing enough of the right things? Okay, so uh, we talk about time management. What we should be managing are our emotions and our energy. In real estate, the reality is there are very few vital functions in order for each of us to succeed. Uh, the first one is prospecting. I, I know um, we don't like it. Uh, and so instead of prospecting, we will consider, I would call our time uh, uh, scrolling through social media, we'll call it our prospecting time. Um, but what we found, whether you're buyer or seller specialist, um, is that prospecting, you know, getting buyers or sellers, so pitching buyers or sellers with EBBAs or marketing agreements, uh, negotiating properties, I'm sorry, negotiating contracts. Uh, and then it is going to be warm client follow-up or, or sphere of influence follow-up. I think the, that's where um, our time management needs to, to really focus on, make sure that our, our energy is focused uh, on those right things. So that's what I have to share right now. I don't know if anyone else has any questions or want to give input, um, but I do know that the format for Bar Camp is so that we can be uh, collaborative and so that anyone else can share. So go ahead and feel free. Okay, so, um, uh, until someone else chimes in, uh, one of the challenges that I've had, and I know that my mentors and my coaches um, that I've had for uh, almost a couple of decades now um, ha have reminded me of is that one of the big reasons why we aren't as effective with using our time as we should be uh, is because we don't know what we're chasing after. We don't know what our goals are, uh, that, that we don't have a clear vision of what it is that we want. Uh, so I would ask each of you, I would challenge you all to, to wherever you're taking notes um, and, or whatever you're getting information 
on is to ask yourself, do you know what you want? Uh, because it's hard to manage your time effectively if you're headed towards a goal that you can't see or that you don't know. Uh, and, and I think that the concreteness and the clarity of, of what's going to pull you through to say, okay, I have to prospect for this hour, hour and a half. I need to get out and preview property so that I can get my market knowledge um, up. I need to make sure that I'm in my CRM um, or my database and, and ensuring that I'm doing my touches or writing my note cards or sending out my videos, uh, any of those. I think that that becomes easier when we can look up or we can look on our pad or, or on our goals and say, all right, I'm working toward X number of closed transactions. I'm trying to help this many families, or I have a certain sales volume that I'm going after, or, or maybe it has nothing to do with our industry as a whole. Maybe your need and your desire for getting control of your life is so that you can improve your family um, you know, interaction outside of this. Maybe uh, you need to do better time management or become um, more productive so that you can live a healthier life, whether that's physical, mental, or spiritual. Uh, I do believe that what we're finding out right now uh, is that as we are going through this COVID pandemic, we're finding out um, that we really haven't been in that much control of our time. We haven't been as productive as we once thought we were. Right? I know that when we had to run back and forth to the office and when we had to go uh, get coffee and when we had a lot of places to go and a lot of things to do, I, I know myself, I was lying to myself. Uh, and I can't speak to you all, but I know that uh, I can say uh, that when I was forced to sit down and slow down and when all I had was time to prospect, all of my excuses went out of the window. Right. Um, so I don't know if you all are doing time blocking, if you have certain days for certain activities, um, but a schedule is so important for those of us who are parents uh, on, on the call. Uh, I know that we're quick to tell our kids um, or, or even our siblings. Right. I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Our spouses or significant others right now. I wish you would stick to a schedule. Uh, but then the same freedom, the same reason why we got into the industry, you know, the, the freedom uh, is the same thing that that is uh, our poison. The fact that we don't have set schedules uh, and, and, you know, science tells us that our minds and our bodies react best and are most efficient and effective when there is some type of predictability to our schedule. Right. Uh, and, you know, Jim Rohn, uh, if you all have not read one more book. Um, the 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma. Uh, so it is, it has great principles and, and a great foundation for learning. It has some quirky stuff in there as well. And so it ties entertainment in with education. But the 5 a.m. Club, and not that you have to um, get up at 5 a.m., but what we find is that it's a great print, uh, um, foundation for creating frameworks to your day. If you don't have a framework to your day, I can almost guarantee that you aren't producing at the highest level possible. I have a specific wake up time. I have a no electronics time in your morning to make sure that you're centered. The same thing at night. Um, so, so those are some of the things that I found to be very uh, impactful. And that has allowed me to have a um, better success than I would had I not had bookends on the, the ends of my days and then be intentional uh, with my activities because I'm working towards certain goals, whether those were personal, professional, financial, um, or, or, or just when it came to relaxation and leisure goals. So if anyone else has anything else that they would like to share, any questions that they have, maybe about best practices, what some people are doing to uh, have more time on their hands or to utilize the time that they have um, to, to the maximum uh, impact, go ahead and feel free. Either uh, unmute yourself or you can uh, type it in the chat. Uh, I want to I go ahead and chime in myself here. Uh, Joram John Batiste with uh, Property Real Property Scholars Real Estate Development. Uh, <clears throat> so, Neil, thank you for that, by the way. Those books... I'm going to definitely go ahead and check in. And even if I can do it on YouTube to listen to them while I walk, uh, that kind of brings me into my, to what I was going to say. Uh, when it comes down to me, uh, I'm not necessarily too much first when it comes down to time management. And that's why I'm like, yeah, I, I definitely need to come in, come in on this actual call. But for the, for me, what I've been doing is I have a notebook 
Um, it's called the Little More. I'll put it. I'll put it in, in the. Um, it's called the Little More. I'll put it in the uh, the group chat here. But it basically goes ahead and gives you three things. Your top three priority things, like whatever it is, is if it's going to be whatever you're going to do for that day. If you're going to go ahead and need to go ahead and go to an open house or check out a house or go to a listing, uh, do some do some uh, uh, some farming, whatever it is you need to do for that day. That'll be um, the first top three things. And then anything else is right under that. Uh, so that's something that I make sure every morning. I, I Actually, what you do is every morning you go ahead and you look at it. But at the end of the day, you check off what you were able to accomplish. And then you set up what you didn't do for the next day. And then so that way you, nothing falls into the cracks um, when it comes down to it. So I'm, it's a little old fashioned, but um, I, I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so uh, definitely something that I think would, would be um, helpful for everyone is a little more book or just an, it, something like that, something to that effect to be able to write down what you have to do for the day and check it off as you complete it or at the end of the day, check it off and then set up your day for the next day. Um, wake up in the morning, um, do your, do, do your, you know, devotionals, um, your affirmations, uh, because these times this it's crazy. It's crazy. So you definitely want to get your mental, your mental self, um, checked in. And, um, so, you know, maybe an hour a day or even 30 minutes a day, whatever your schedule is, uh, to go ahead and kind of make sure you uh, center yourself and, and, and have that book ready for you to go ahead and tackle the day on. And that's, that's really all I have to say. Also, I just wanted to hear, you know, how I sound um, on this uh, call. <laughs> Well, well uh, Joram, you have a voice for radio, sir. You sound fantastic. I think you should go in and do all voiceovers going forward. Um, so good <laughs> stuff there. Um, but you mentioned something that said that it was old fashioned. Well, what you're talking about in the method that you're talking about um, that you shared, uh, it, it is one portion of the Buffett method uh, of Warren Buffett. Um, and so I would challenge you all to take what Joram said and take it one step further. So that's the beginning part of the Buffett method. Uh, and the, the the further thing is once you know what your top three priorities of the day are, what Warren Buffett does and has done and continues to do uh, is that when he has three priorities, he says, well, what's my number one priority? And nothing happens. Number two and number three and that additional list does not get done until number one is done. If number one, uh, so on Joram's list, if it takes, you know, 10 minutes to get his number one priority done, then, then great, he moves to number two. If it takes four hours for number one to get done, uh, then um, he doesn't get the other two done until later. Uh, many times, um, it could take as much as an entire day, especially if it is a sizable task um, or, or priority only one thing might get done, but what would your day, what would your business, what would your life look like at the end of 2020? It's from today, from August 19th to the end of the year, what would your year look like if every day you got your highest priority done, right? And, and, and this is, is it old school? That. Absolutely. But what I do know is that if each of us on this chat right now, on this video, got our highest priority for today done and did the same thing tomorrow and then came around on Friday and did the same thing and, hold it and held ourselves accountable, uh, that our year and our lives will be drastically transformed. Um, now, with that, that requires a, a couple of four-letter words that we might not want to hear that requires accountability. Right? That requires us to sit down and vet our calendar, and that requires us to look at our priorities and say, is my number one my real number one priority, or is this just the one that's easy? Um, if not, um, then we have to go back. And like I said, it, it causes, we have to hold ourselves accountable. And, and then the, the second four-letter word, as I like to call it, is maturity. Uh, it, it forces us to be mature. It, it, it forces us to sit back and say, all right, I have to forego immediate pleasure for a long-term, better, bigger um, payoff or reward at the end. Um, and, and I don't know about you all, but many days that's challenging for me. I can only speak for Neil. Right. Um, but I do know that when I make those decisions uh, to go through and as Joram said, when I look at my uh, priorities the night before and I say, OK, um, can this get done? Is this important? Yes, it is. And then I look at it in the morning. And so uh, in, in our lives, things change so rapidly from one moment to the next. So what was priority number one last night might not be priority number one today. 
right? And Warren Buffett, what he does is he might have a top three list on Monday. By Monday night, his top three priorities uh, have changed. Uh, and what I would ask you is that when you make your priority list for the day uh, or for the week, if number one isn't number one for a couple of days in a row, then it's probably not your real priority, right? So a few things in real estate should always be priority number one, prospecting. If prospecting is not your number one priority, guess what? You're going to be unemployed. <laughs> because, because without, because think about it, without leads, without business, we're like, we're unemployed. We are one of the few industries where you can give 150% and get nothing back in return. All right. So I think that prospecting has to be a priority. Learning our industry, learning your market has to be a priority. And then we fill in. It's the idea of the big rocks and the small rocks in our business. So on your calendar or whatever app you're using, if you cannot show me, if you can't tell me, Jim Rohn says, it, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Darren Hardy, all the brightest minds says, show me where you spend your time and your money, and I'll be able to tell you the quality of your life. So if you show me, if you say that real estate is important and growth and sales are important to you as an agent, but I don't see any prospecting time set off on your calendar, forgive me for saying this, you're a liar. Okay. If you tell me that your family is a priority or that your health is a priority and I don't see any, you know, day dates or, or day trips, or I don't see your uh, workout time or eating healthy, like lunch time or recharge time, then you're lying. Not to me, you're lying to yourself. Right. And I think that's a dangerous place to be. So I, I'm looking in the chat right now, and I'm going to uh, just, just go ahead. And I'm going to ask Gabriel to give some input on time management and pro, pro, being pro, uh, productive. But I see some things in the chat talking about what's the best uh, planner, uh, calendar. The best one is the one you're going to use, hands down, period. So me, I use an old-fashioned paper um, planner. I have some things in my phone. I'm using the, see Melinda, we were right there together. That's why we're, we're, we're kindred spirits. Um, some people, might, and I have to use Google Calendar because of my team and my family where I'm sharing things, but whatever is going to work for you, what you use is not important. What's important is that you use something and that you stick to it. So you go in and say, okay, well, is this really important? So me being a husband and a dad, if I'm telling my wife and my son that they're important, um, but then on, every Tuesday night is game night in our house. But if, they're, if, that, if I say that they're important and that time management or being productive as a spouse and a dad is important, but then they look at my calendar and I never have time for them. Guess what? They're going to say, mm, I hear what you're saying, dad, but I don't believe you. Gabriel, boss man in the house, go ahead. What, what do you have for us um, just about being productive or managing time or making sure that we get the right things done and not that we aren't just busy? Oh, man. I mean, if to answer that question accurately, it'd be a disservice if I didn't bring up the Pareto principle. Did you guys cover that? I just got in here. Nah, brother, go ahead. See, look, we, we, everything we've done up to now is just to set you up for your platform, man. Exactly, Melinda. Yes, the rule of 80-20. I'm obsessed with those numbers. And uh, the Pareto principle can be applied across the board, any industry. It's already been done. Um, and it's basically that, you know, 80% of the work you do re results to only 20% of your results. And it's, it's extremely small. That so much, you know, the work that you're doing really only amounts to a quarter of the results that you're getting out of it. And that's the case for the majority of the work that you do. So I try to make sure, just like you were mentioning on your calendar, um, I'm always analyzing every single week, what is it that I did this week that falls into the 80%? And what is it that I did this week that falls into the 20%? What is the 20% work that I do that gives me four times the results that amounts for 80% of my actual income of you know my actual objectives being accomplished so i definitely definitely would not want to leave here today without mentioning the rule of 80 20. um if you actually start applying to you know your own reflection I, you know I, I totally overlooked reflection right now i mean it, it doesn't sound like something that contributes to productivity but it's probably the biggest contributor to my productivity and that's reflection too um, you know looking back at what you're doing is the only way to change what it is you're doing and put yourself on track so, um, you know, absorbing all of these systems, absorbing all of this knowledge, reading all these books, watching all these videos, 
are completely pointless if you don't implement them. And sometimes we don't even notice that we don't implement them. So reflecting after the Pareto principle, re reflection is huge for me when it comes to being more productive. Taking the time to look at yourself and say, hey, what did I do this week that you know is gonna move me forward? And what did I do this week that I shouldn't have? Because mistakes don't really harm anyone. It's the mistakes that are repeated that really hold you back. So let's, uh, let's start reflecting and making sure that we never commit mistakes twice, you know? So, so really quickly, uh, on, on what Gabriel just said, what I'm going to elaborate on, and Gabriel can probably attest to this, many times the 20% that we should be doing uh, is not sexy, it's not fun, it's not flashy, it's the mundane. Uh, and, and so I, I know that just from what I know and what I've seen of Gabriel uh, it is a lot like if you talk to any of the best, Melinda can say the same thing. Uh, the trick that the masters and that the elite few do is they master the mundane, right? They stick through and they do all of that boring stuff that is really going to get the greatest results. Um, and, and then uh, a word that I love hearing that one of my mentors shared with me, we just plod along and um, we just continue to go. We continue to make the phone calls. We continue to send out the marketing emails. We continue to make the contacts. We continue to negotiate and prospect, you know, and, and that's not the sexy stuff. You know, I mean, you aren't going to hear that we went out and we rented a boat and we took our clients out and we did that one time. And that's what, you know, resulted in the amazing success. Um, but then what Gabriel said, looking back, are we mature enough to look back and admit what didn't work? And maybe today on August 19th is the day we say, you know, we've been trying this for a year and a half and doing it wrong just because it was easy or because everyone is doing it or because I like doing it and it hasn't yielded results. Um, are, are, we, are, are we more focused on our comfortability or are we more focused on growth, development, and success in every aspect of our life? Um, so that's just something that I would share uh, with you all. And, and when it comes to time management or being productive, um, are we emotionally mature enough to be held accountable, uh, right? So everyone wants to have a prospecting partner. Like, do you have a real accountability partner so that when you go back and look at your day or look at your week, let's just use, use week, um, when you look back at your week, can you say, um, okay, well, for instance, if I have to answer to Gabriel, now, I'm a great salesman, so I can sell myself on why I didn't get stuff done. I can make excuses for myself, but Gabriel's going to ask me, Neil, did you prospect these X number of days? No. Why not? Uh, because I didn't. You right. Um, so I believe that in this, we need to have a framework. We need to set um, goals and we need to set, set systems and processes in place to, to save us from ourselves. So anyone else, uh, go ahead, chime in. Any questions that you have, any tips that you might have that have helped you be um, more productive and to manage time more efficiently and effectively? Or do you just have questions for someone uh, that maybe we can stumble through? Well, if no one's going to step in, I want to just reinforce one thing you mentioned. Well, two things you mentioned about being uncomfortable, that we sometimes we catch ourselves doing things that are comfortable just to avoid us from doing the things that are mundane and the really unsexy tasks. So if, you know, merging those two together, I definitely want to make sure that the group uh, looks into the book, Eat That Frog, because it's written by Brian Tracy, and it talks about what Neil was just mentioning right now about the unsexy, the mundane, the uncomfortable tasks. Those are the tasks that I look forward to every morning. Those are the first tasks. That's the only task I want to get done. And I call it my top task, but in that book, they call it Eat the Frog. And it, it reminds you of a frog that you have to eat because it's probably the number one task that you don't want to do today. It's gross, just like a frog would be. The thought of doing it is disgusting, just like eating a frog is. Um, and, and it really gets you into the, the mindset of doing the uncomfortable, doing what needs to be done because that's what moves the needle forward. And can I jump in? I think for everybody, the most uncomfortable thing usually is sales. And so they always wait to all do it later, or whatever. They do all the other busy work and then they don't get on the phones and then it's too late in the day and then nobody answers or whatever. And then they do only two because then they have to go home for dinner or go pick up their kid. So it's just, that's the most uncomfortable thing. But either way, whatever the uncomfortable thing is or something, the, the phone, that one phone call you're avoiding to make, just get it out of the way because it's going to just, you'll feel better afterwards. You, you might hate doing it, but you'll feel better. So the, all, those, all those things. But um, definitely the self-reflection, I could totally relate to that. We need to see what we're doing 
and whether it's monthly, quarterly, daily, weekly, reflect back and see what worked, what didn't, and adjust and pivot. Because if you keep doing the same things, whether it's on your marketing expenditures, how you spend your time, whatever it is, reflection is key to making the right moves. And um, yeah, so that, that's it. But I took notes from you guys. So uh, great, great, great nuggets. All right, so just as a quick update, um, so we're almost done with this session right here. Uh, at 1 p.m. in Zoom room number one, we have creating inventory for buyers in COVID times. Creating inventory for buyers in COVID times. Uh, room number two or session two, how to provide value so prospects never disappear. How to provide value so prospects never disappear. And then in session three, things you may do but did not know could get you in trouble. Uh-oh, uh, that one sort of scares me. Things you may do but did not know can get you in trouble. That's going to be, if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be in room number three. Um, so just as we go through the rest of the day, I want to remind you all to be sure to take notes. At the end of the day, I'm going to ask you to implement one thing that you've learned today. We don't want to wait until tomorrow uh, because tomorrow does not exist at this day and time. At this moment right now, tomorrow is a lie. So I'm gonna ask you all to implement something today that will move you closer to your goals. Uh, and then that should help you in your time management or productivity mastery, being more efficient and effective. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Uh, it is one o'clock, so the new sessions are beginning.